Hello and good day, everybody. This is Kyla, and today on The State of Health, we're looking at the impact of insomnia on our overall well-being. The State of Health is a semi-weekly podcast and publication where we talk about the most important news and research in medicine and healthcare. Visit stateofhealth.care for more information about our YouTube, newsletter, and publication. Welcome back to The State of Health. It's estimated that one in four adults in the United States experience symptoms of insomnia each year. This can be fleeting, often brought on by stress or illness. But for one in 10 adults, this insomnia becomes a chronic issue, leading to difficulty falling or staying asleep at least three times a week for three months or more. But the problem isn't just about losing sleep. Lack of sleep can also harm our minds and overall health. For instance, a recent poll from the National Sleep Foundation found a correlation between poor sleep and depressive symptoms. It's also been discovered that sleep deprivation can cause anxiety and distress in otherwise healthy individuals. Yet, there's good news. Cognitive Behavioral Therapy for Insomnia, or CBTI, has proven to be an effective treatment for insomnia, with noticeable improvements typically seen within eight sessions or less. Even with this efficient treatment available, many people with insomnia often resort to medication first. A survey from the Centers for Disease Control in 2020 showed more than 8% of adults take sleep medication regularly to help them sleep. And while these medications can be helpful in the short term, studies have shown that CBTI is not only as effective, but also more beneficial in the long run. There's more good news, too. Clinical trial data suggests that a whopping 80% of people who try CBTI see improvements in their sleep, and the majority of these patients find relief in just 4 to 8 sessions, regardless of how long they've suffered from insomnia. However, what exactly is CBTI? It's a common misunderstanding that CBTI only focuses on sleep hygiene, the routines and environments that promote good sleep. While sleep hygiene is indeed part of it, CBTI also addresses anxieties and negative beliefs about sleep that often come with chronic insomnia. It teaches relaxation methods like deep breathing and mindfulness meditation and helps patients develop realistic expectations about their sleep habits. Finding a provider who specializes in CBTI can be challenging, as there are less than 700 clinicians trained in this area in the United States. But don't worry. If face-to-face -face counseling isn't an option, self-directed online CBTI programs have shown to be just as effective. There are several low-cost or free resources that teach the main principles of CBTI, including online programs, apps, and even books. Anyways, friends, that is going to do it for today's State of Health. If you found this episode helpful, please do me such a huge favor. Click those like and subscribe buttons. And if you're listening as a podcast, consider leaving a review or a five-star rating. Don't forget to check out stateofhealth.care for more relevant medical news and content. Until next time, keep your curiosity peaked and your stethoscope close.